dun 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 there's there's no deep hit. Oh wait, wait, we're not playing Skyrim. No, slightly, slightly over. Yeah, there's slightly. Well, you can do the Morrowind theme if you want. It's the same thing, just like, like on a penny whistle. Piddlier. Yeah, it's a little more simplistic. It is. Well, hello guys. Welcome to episode ten of the Beer and Games Variety. Freeform, guys, go start over. We're launching. This didn't happen. Nobody. No one's watching. It's, don't worry. Don't yeah, it's episode yeah. 10 of the Beer and Video Games Variety Show. Mm-hmm. I'm Jack. This is Bear. And we have our esteemed guest, Kevin Kenson. Yep. As you can see, that's name. his Twitter that's, handle. Yeah. That's Flashing. Right there. So. Oh, freaking out the camera. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. <laughs> for those of you who have been willing to put up with our crap. <laughs> for for 10 whole episodes. And, Somehow. And, I'm already... Yeah. I, yeah. It's and, already awful. I'm and and, and twenty something hours of let's play Final Fantasy Tactics, like half of which was either us grinding or dying. <laughs> that sums up the entire game. Yeah, I mean. yeah. <laughs> like uh, you guys have stuck around, and part of sticking around means that you've heard me, like uh, more or less bitching that we weren't playing Morrowind. <laughs> so it's, it's finally a, happening, it's guys. A good thing to bitch about. It's We're a, finally you know, playing Morrowind. It's a big ten episode ten. Yeah. Um, you gotta do something a little special. Yeah, and oh. and this is su- this is our super duper special episode. We have a special guest mm-hmm. who is much more famous than we are. <laughs> so uh, that's we not uh, let's see what else we have. Morrowind, of course, mm-hmm. but this episode inadvertently became a celebration of my my favorite brewery or one of my favorite breweries putting out my favorite barley wine out of all the barley wines I've ever had like by leaps and bounds mm. and that is Sukaba or Abacus it has a lot of names but Sukaba is usually the one that all the beer geeks say mm. um, so uh, Bear texted me the other night he said that he had a bottle of Sukaba and right. I thought great it's, well, it's how, Sukaba season. You know? how, yeah, yeah, yeah. It came out on the 17th. It's like, I want to do a barley wine, right? And you're like, I don't really like barley wines. I did not say that. <laughs> <laughs> like, you're like, I want to do my favorite Not on the record. Yeah. It's like, what, what barley wine are we going to do? And I'm like, I don't know. I've got, I, how about Sukaba? You're like, how are you going to get that? I'm like, it's in my fridge right now. <laughs> yeah. Like, so I didn't even know that. that was a good beer. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, grab it. so the funny thing is, is like Sukaba, it came out on the 17th, but it usually takes more than three or four days to hit shelves mm. and so i was like how the hell does he have it already and so i came in today and turns out turns out look at that shit that is not a, focusing not, yeah not focusing all, your face is there just don't uh, foc- focusing there it is <laughs> there it is so that is sukaba um 2014 the fourth vintage so this is not this is not the beer that was I guess bottled on the seventeenth. Yeah, it was bottled on the seventeenth of last of year. Last year. This is so a this vintage. is a year old beer. Yeah, and the nice thing about year old beer <laughs> is that, it will, especially if it's a barley wine, mm-hmm. is that it ages incredibly gracefully. Barley wine is one of the best things that you can age. Um, you know, high ABV stouts. Uh, obviously, those are oh, they got some lag. Um, Teens bit. Yeah. That's weird. Yeah, so um, anyways, uh, high ABV stouts, really good for aging, but for some reason, that barley wine, it's got like a, enough of a, of a sugar content to, and, and like a lot of really rich fermentables that just develop and add more complexity as the years go by. They're bottle conditioned, so it's built for cellaring. Mm. Um, so yeah, it's a year old beer. It's our first time drinking uh, an aged beer, I think, on stream. Yeah. Yeah, so lots of good stuff for tonight. Well, I'm really, what excited. about the old Rasputin barrel aged? Well, no, I mean this is barrel aged too. It's Asian yeah. bourbon yeah. barrels, but I mean like bottle condition. This mm. is a year old. Right. That that old Rasputin. Yeah. I think that was still a fourteen. Yeah, still here because I yeah. love it so much. Let's see. <laughs> uh, it's uh, let's see. It should have a bottling date. Should. Um. Hmm. 
Maybe it was on the court or something. Yeah. Dude, like, maybe Rasputin brewed it himself. Maybe. Maybe this is like a several hundred year old beer. That's why it's so damn good. <laughs> yeah. But uh, no, With I think that was, that was this year's vintage, but this one, the Sukaba, is last year's. So super, super excited. Uh, I don't even want to talk about the beer. I just want to drink it. You just want to get to it? <laughs> so, so I'm making an executive order and I'm pouring it. So here for you guys. Got Mine's that. behind there too. Oh yeah, look at that beautiful color. On awful, this. awful color. <laughs> All right, and we'll get that. No, oh, I think mine's behind too. Yep. Look at the Halloween themed one. Up higher. They're they're not getting that. They're not. There we go. Look at that There. And trick or treat today. It's a treat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait till we boot up Morrowind. We'll see. I don't know. Yeah. That bottle was open. You might have switched it with something else. It's a trick. There you go. Trick. All right. So, as you can tell by mine, uh, <laughs> no no carbonation and well no uh, head light. retention in there. Yeah. Vexy is here. She says nice color, but she spelled it the English way, like the British. She's Canadian. Fancy. That would make sense. Well then, you know. <laughs> all right. So first of all, let's talk about that color. What do you guys think? It's a. Uh, it's real deep. Yeah. It's like it Auburn. Is. It has you brown can really and only see it. Yeah. It's Auburn. You can only see where it's at its thinnest, too. It gets yeah. really thick. Yeah. It's real nice, is yeah. what it is. It's a, there's not too much of a spectrum to it. Yeah. No. I, I feel like uh, I feel like tonight is just going to be me trying to dial back your fanboyism for the beer and the yeah. game. <laughs> I think so. It, it, it's a it's a task that I would not yeah. want to take myself. It's a good looking beer. Yes, I'll yeah. say that. And a, and a tiny tan, almost like almost <clears throat> a white head. Like, huh? how how's the lacing? Well, it doesn't hold up because it's a year old. <laughs> okay. That's the first thing to go. Head retention. Um, yeah. So I, I'm not expecting it okay. to, you know, hold up. But it's good. It's got some nice legs on it. Let's uh let's get our noses in it. it smells like plums. Oh yeah. 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 It okay. So while traveling uh across China, did you ever have plum wine? No. Okay, so they make it like uh I got it from one of my students' parents gave it to me as a gift. Mm, that's a nice and it's student. just <laughs> it's just fermented freaking plums in plum juice. Yeah. yeah. And it's basically moonshine with plums. Good. And it smells a little bit like this. <laughs> yeah, this, this is very plummy. Very high but on the burn. But it also has a lot of uh, brown sugar to it. Yeah. A little bit of toffee. There's a sweet notes. Yeah, yeah, like sticky toffee. Yeah. Mm. Um, you can definitely smell the malt. Yeah. And that bourbon is really strong. Like, I'm yeah. surprised it didn't mellow out. Now is that's it is really it strong. Yeah. is that, it the bourbon that's coming out or is that pure like the no, alcohol? That, that's like, bourbon. Smell it. I mean, like you you get bourbon off of it. You get yeah that definite like candied sugar smell that comes off of bourbon after yeah. it's aged for a, a while in oak. I'm sure that we're gonna when we actually get into tasting it, we're gonna get coconut too. Cokey huh. from yeah. Usually when you uh, age a beer in um, uh, God in oak mm -hmm. you get a little bit of coconut flavor hmm. and a little bit of caramel a little bit of brown sugar and i'm smelling all that in here it's a wonderful wonderful beer and like i said like 2015 like this year's sukaba is going to be really hot like you're gonna stick your nose in it and your eyes are gonna water because yeah. of the alcohol mm -hmm. but and you can kind of tell that here hello like, blue says it looks sappy as fuck yeah this is a maple syrup yeah. right here <laughs> All right, so without further ado, you, you guys want to get into it? Yeah. Ooh, our fastest it. tasting yet. <laughs> you get to the point. We'll do this. All right, so cheers, guys. More time for the game. Cheers. Cheers. That is really goddamn smooth. Yeah. Very. Much oh. more than expected. This is, it's better with a year on it. It's better. Like... I knew it was going to be better, and <laughs> I'm just really, really, yeah. like, I'm going to cry, like, because <laughs> I thought that I was going to, it, it wasn't going to live up to what I thought it would be like. Yeah. But this is fucking wonderful. 
What do you guys What do you guys think? I'm, I'm gonna stop. No, you guys. I what like. Do you think? Yeah. No. <laughs> I, I think uh, I think like Morrowind, it's not as good as you say it is, or built it up to be. Okay. Um, I think that it has a really cool like um, I think it has a really cool back end when it sits in your mouth a little bit. Um, hmm. But on initial drinking, I think it's actually smooth to the point where it's like a little watery. It's not hitting me like a barley wine usually would. Yeah, and I'm, I'm not getting an alcohol burn either. Really? I'm, I'm getting a lot mind. of alcohol burn. I'm, yeah. I'm getting an alcohol burn. Maybe. Not, yeah. not heavy. But. So for, for me, basically what's happening is that in the very beginning, I'm getting I'm getting like the fruity notes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then it fades into actually something like a vanilla. Mm-hmm. Uh, that, that tiny roasted coconut is in there too. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. big caramel and very. big like warm bourbon flavor. Yeah. And then in the back end is where the astringency comes in, yeah. the hoppiness, uh, the the alcohol burn that acts as like that yeah. palate cleanser, like begging you yeah. to drink more of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, I'm I'm enjoying the back end the most yeah. out of yeah. the whole thing. My seri- my serious critique, like perhaps my only real critique, yeah. is that I think it would be better aged even longer, because I do think that the alcohol needs to it still needs to mellow out a little bit. Which is one way it doesn't actually connect to the game we're doing. <laughs> there we go. Uh, out a lot of it. No, Morrowind not. only gets harsher with time. Huh? I said, as Morrowind ages, it only gets harsher. It with, doesn't smooth without out. modding. Definitely, yeah. It, ooh, it's it's rough going back to it. Well, even with modding, just because mechanics. We'll talk about it. In a bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I'm, I'm jumping ahead too much. We'll get there. <laughs> we'll get there. Yeah. Um, mouthfeel. I agree. It's yeah. thin. Yeah. It is. Very it's thin for a barley wine. That's it's doing the, it a lot. I mean, and and this just comes from my my conception of what a barley wine should be. I want all the flavors to be really in your face in a barley wine. That's these aren't. No, I really? definitely don't think so. I think they're there. I think they're noticeable, but I don't think that it's coming up on top. Like, uh, what were the two barley wines I just had? I just had mash, and um, I forget the other one. The other one is hammerhead. The, Hammerhead. That one was very full bodied, and what it highlighted throughout the phases and the development of its taste, it hit you in the face in a really, really good way. Yeah. Mm. Um, that's just what I want out of a barley line. I feel like this is a little muted. It's all there. You don't even have to look for it, yeah. but I want it more. Well, yeah, and see, I wouldn't say mute. Muted is not what I would say. I would say that it has just a lot of development, and it doesn't linger. Okay, on, I was just on about, certain, yeah, maybe it doesn't resonate. Right, yeah. So, like, this beer is definitely a sipper. Um, yeah. because, and most barley wine is. But there are some barley wines where, like, mm. you know, I've had mash, and I just... I just mm. kind of had it, you know. I had it in a big yeah, yeah, sniffer, yeah. like mm. I mean, a big tulip like that. I just kind of went at it, mm-hmm. and you know, it's good. It's pretty sessionable. Yeah. And I just drank it because you know it's a barley wine, and I like barley yeah. wine. But with this, like this is a beer that you really have to appreciate. Yeah. Well, on that note, um, what I like about it is that generally when we talk about the phases of beer, we talk about the beginning, middle, and end. Mm-hmm. I think that there really is like a distinct five phases on this taste. Yeah, and, and that to me is what I think when I think barley wine. Okay. That that's mm, what I that think. Complexity where it has all those different. Mm. Yeah. Exactly, a lot of complexity, a lot of stages, and a mm. full development where the, I guess the order in which you're experiencing the yeah. tastes, is important. Mm-hmm. Like that alcohol burn, it has to come at the end. Yeah. Uh, that astringency <laughs> has to come at the end because the sweetness has to be at the front. So you're getting sweetness, you're getting richness, you're getting that savory yeah. stuff, and then boom, you get the bourbon, and boom, you get the alcohol burn, mm-hmm. it cleanses your palate, and you're ready to go. And that's how I like my yeah. stouts, too. That's why I like Parabola so much. Right. You know? And that's another one. That one has some phases as well. I wouldn't Oof. say it goes to five. It, well, I can maybe push it to a four. Ha, ha, uh, did you have the bottle to yourself? Uh, no, I shared it with uh, Steve. Because honestly... The last bottle of Parabola I had, like, as we moved through the bottle, it mm. tasted different. Hmm. And, like, that Parabola is, like, the perfect We went through me. Parabola. We drank the whole bottle. Then we had a bottle of old viscosity. Older viscosity. Mm, delicious. And it tasted like water after Parabola. <laughs> it's, like, getting crazy how much mm-hmm. Parabola hits you in the face. Par- I do love like older viscosity, yeah. though. That's parabola nice has amazing flavor. 
Yeah. An amazing yeah. development. Yeah. The, again, a little thin, yeah. but it's bottle conditioned. It's going to get better with time, and it's just mm. like, it's perfect. It's mm. fucking yeah. perfect. So this is actually turning out to be a very good beer to describe Morrowind, I think. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Minus yeah. one note. Uh, yeah, there, it's, it's a game that needs to be appreciated. It needs, yeah. you know... You need to look at what's happening. It has a bunch of stages of complexity and mm -hmm. how the game develops as a whole. And you need to take your time through it. Yeah. You have to experience yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely. And I want more. Good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so you're okay. like a better combat system. <laughs> <laughs> ah, there we go. Different right. style. Different yeah. style. So, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. so let's go. Appearance, how are you rating it? One to five, five being the top, one being the bottom. Three, five. It's nice looking. I don't think it warrants that four. I don't think it warrants the above. Yeah. And we do this out of five. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm going to give it a four because it held up well. Again, it would look different if you had a 15 vintage. I'm going to have to agree with you. I think, yeah, four. I like the look. Yeah. <clears throat> so then smell. Or the aroma. Great nose, I think. Yeah. Wonderful fucking nose. Yeah. Really, yeah. A lot of... More maple on the nose than I think in the taste mm, Yeah, definitely. Really nice syrup, yeah. like maple. Vexy would be down with this one. <laughs> <laughs> Canadians. Yeah, because I'm actually not getting maple really in the in the taste, but I could see it in the in the aroma. Yeah. So aroma. I I could push that one to uh four two five. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I'd probably say four five. Four five. Yeah. I'd say four seven five. This All right. this is really a really nice smelling beer. It's nice. Spe <laughs> Not perfect, fifteen, just, just just there. Yeah, fifteen. Yeah. I would give a four five probably. Okay. I haven't smelled it yet, but I'm going to assume that the the heat on the alcohol mm -hmm. is going to detract yeah. from my personal experience with it. So this. Right, now, wait, like, what's the alcohol content on this? Uh, thirteen five. Thirteen. Mm. You would not know it, I don't think. <laughs> you would really not. Uh, I think you would. You would know it's high. I don't know. If you would know it's above high. ten. So yeah, it's, you would definitely know it's above ten. It's going definitely. down real smooth to me. I don't know if I busted my taste buds or I, something. Yeah, but I don't know because that. Yeah. I, I mean, you ate a waffle really fast like five minutes ago. <laughs> it, it just. I don't know. It's smooth. Which you like think would pair really man. well, you know? <laughs> <laughs> See, so yeah. how about uh, mouthfeel? I'll go ahead and give it a three five. Yeah, I would three, give it. I would give it a three if this were a, like the standard yeah. mouthfeel. But I know that it's aged. What aged I, beers you're never have a you're never gonna have a good mouthfeel. What feel. I always like in the mouthfeel is the tingly, and you only get that around stage three of the taste, yeah. and then it's gone. Yeah. You know? um, so overall, um, I, I'd like to note though that usually when you're drinking something hop heavy with a lot of uh, astringency, when it sits in your mouth and you start to breathe, it gets really bad. Mm -hmm. And this isn't happening here, I don't think. Right. Well, because it's not hop forward. Yeah. You know, but there is astringency, so yeah, you definitely. get that balance where you get the taste without the unpleasant after. Yeah. So, uh, mouth feel. What did you give it? I gave it a three you did, five. You did three five. I think that's fair. I can yeah. agree with yeah. that. Overall. Overall. Four. Okay. Four. I'll go four or five. I agree, yeah. Hmm. I'll go four or five. There we go. There we go. Now, because just you said this earlier, are you going four or five because you actually think this particular bottle is four or five, or just because knowing what it could have been? Uh, actually, well, the thing is, if if I'm talking about this in comparison to a, a brand new vintage, mm -hmm. less than a month old, I would put this at a four, like, seven, five. Hmm. Um, I'm thinking the the fresh Sukaba will be like a four, like a four 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 three five or no. something like that. Like not, it's not a four two five or below uh, the fresh Sukaba. I would mm -hmm. like to taste this year's Sukaba because if Just it's hotter it. than this, like, and that's what I want. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're gonna I'd, love it. I'd like to taste that. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, like I said, I, I told you going in, this is a really hot beer. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, for being a year old, it still hasn't really mellowed out significantly. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, pick up a bottle. It'll, you're going to love it. Yeah. If that's what you're looking for. Yeah. I love right. the alcohol brand. I yeah. do. I do. So that was our, uh, our 2014 vintage of Sukaba by Firestone Walker. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was with, with nice. special guest Kevin Kinson for those of you <laughs> all, just all showing that, up here. Showing but, all that input on the beer. Yeah, so, all right, um, so here, here we go. All right. Now we have Bump. to we have to we have to talk to <laughs> like, our fans. So let's see. We yes. have uh, Vexy's here. What's up, Vexy? Good to see you as always. Uh, I saw Guido earlier. 
Hello, sir. Our manager. We've got, we've got Matt. What's up, Matt? Uh, we have Alex Toma saying that this looks like Pepsi. It's not Pepsi, but hello, Alex. <laughs> Good to see you as always. <laughs> and then uh, we've got Hello Blue. What's up? Probably tastes like Kurs. <laughs> like no. what? Kurs. <laughs> well, maybe uh, maybe like MGD. Oh, yeah. Maybe MGD. Yeah. yeah. Did we miss anyone? Let's see. Lurkers? What do we got? We got Lurkers. We got them Lurkers. We have uh, Kalundrakai. 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 What would you say? Kalundrakai. Kalundrakai. Only because I, I know that's how it's supposed to be pronounced because I know who that is. Oh, Kalundrakai. What's <laughs> Oh, okay. So it's not lurker. <laughs> it's not a lurker. Not entirely. Okay. And then there, oh, nice. We have the, uh, we have the, uh, <laughs> we have Lord Nar- Narivar. We have Narivar in here. Narivar. Yeah. That's very topical. That's yes. Yep. Narivar. Cheers to Narivar. <laughs> I already finished mine. I can't cheer. <laughs> well, let me get you more. Beautiful. No arguments here. So, right, so let's, is this... let's move it into uh, our conversation of Morrowind. Why don't we start with our first impressions? Like, like so, so Morrowind is a game that when we talk about, we're talking about a huge nostalgia bomb for oh, a lot yeah. of people. This is a huge deal. This is, uh, you know, we're we're top three games for people. Yeah, yeah, my favorite game. Uh, it's yeah, one of my top three. It, exactly, personal okay. top three. Yeah, yeah, and I I can see why that's true. So let's talk about. What was it like that first playthrough? And I and I'm coming from obviously a far different point of view, right? Because you're starting, you just started playing, it, yeah, basically, yeah, yeah. You're yeah. just like what, almost forty hours in now? Forty hours, yeah, yeah. yeah whereas I, we did that, oh god, a long time ago, yeah, yeah. And I, exactly. Way more hours total. I've put more hours into uh, Morrowind than probably any other game, yeah. with the exception of maybe uh, World of Warcraft. Yeah, and, 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 and most kind of, yeah, most cheat a little bit with yeah, that yeah. for yeah. game time. I mean, yeah, we'll, we'll see. For it. a I mean, single player game, it's yeah. A, it's I, I put in hours. forty hours, and once we get the game booted up, I'll we'll open up the world map and we'll see exactly how much, how much of it I've explored. explored. Yeah. So, <laughs> well, because some of those places you just spend hours in one place. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Doing all I mean, I spent thirty of those hours between like Vivek, Balmora, and like Pelagia, like yeah. that circle. Yeah, that whole, the whole Hulalu area. Yeah. Vivek, yeah. Well, Vivek's just like the biggest city, so yeah. he's been a lot of time So, there. one of you, Ro, we'll start with you. Yeah, yeah, special guest. Yes. What uh, was it First like? time, geez. Um, what, well, was first she time I played with you? Oh, no, it was rough. Um, <laughs> well, it was actually funny, because the first time I played it was it was, it was a friend's recommendation, mm-hmm. and uh, this was when it was still, it only been out for maybe like a year at the time. I didn't play it right away, but it was like early high school mm. and i had like i played rpgs but nothing that freeform nothing that rpg <laughs> nothing that rpg uh yeah before i did nothing tabletop and stuff mm. yeah exactly <laughs> i didn't do any tabletop yeah. yet well i did a little neverwinter rights but anyways point being so for me that it, it was kind of an interesting experience because my friend just hands me a note with it like here's what you should do at the start right away like ridiculous ways just to like get a good head start yeah like uh jump driving, a lot Huh? Jump well, that. a lot. Jump yeah. a lot. Uh, in the first area, you can grab a plate and drop it right away. Yeah. Bonus. You yep. do that. Yep. <laughs> uh, stealing the Sword of White Woe from the Guard Tower in Balmora. It's the sword with just a ton of money, and it's really easy to steal. It's silly. From Balmora? Yeah. Huh. One of the Guard Towers. It's on top of, like, a cabinet. You cool. just, like, jump up on a barrel and grab it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, so I had these, like, liner notes for what to do. And uh, so it was kind of guided at first. But I think what I really, what made me fall in love with the game so quickly was that more than any other game, especially the way it introduces you, it's very alien. Mm. You know, I was actually I was I was uh, showing Kalundrakai ah because you're watching. Uh, I was showing them the gameplay because uh, they never actually played. Mm-hmm. And I was like, yeah, look, so here's the first town you're in. It's Sedanine. It's this little like kind of you know boonies place, a couple mm-hmm. buildings here and there. And you walk, and you're told you have to get to this place called Balmora. So you you know you walk off into the yeah. wilderness a little bit, and then there's this gigantic four-legged insect thing <laughs> that. The silt strider. Yeah, yeah, which is like one of the main forms of fast travel. Yeah. You use that or, or like wagons and no. boats. So it's no just wagons. Like, oh, no wagons. Also, That's right. No yeah, wagons. It was silt strider striders and boats. and boats. I thought it was a third cut. Anyways, no. point being, so... Oh, Mage Diviner. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mage yeah, yeah. And also Diviner. Yeah. yeah. Guild or, Guides. Or Mark Recall, I think. Yeah. yeah. Anyways, so that was just... That, that made the moment mm. so much because it was such an alien atmosphere compared to so many other games. Mm. I mean, you know, in terms of the wildlife, uh, plant life... I mean, you have floating jellyfish <laughs> that aren't even like aggro. They're just yeah, they're like just around. They're they're cattle. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's it, egg it, mines. Yeah, you know, egg mines. Yeah, one of the main exports. Yeah, it, it's it's it was just it was the first game I played that had fully realized that alien of a setting that didn't have yeah. that many like there was some recognizable. We, we things, you know, but, without making it feel like oh this is stupid. 
Yeah. Like, it, it's not too out there. Yeah, you say, what the hell is that? But in an actual, yeah. like, kind of shock sense, not yeah. a, this is dumb. <laughs> and, and nothing of the, the alienness is for shock value. It's yeah. all, like, it's all very it's integrated into the world. Yeah, into the setting. In, in a very good way. Yeah. And, it, and it's, it rides that line of, you know, being foreign enough where you're like, what the hell? Like, I've never seen this in a video game yeah. before. Mm-hmm. But not being, like, completely weird and alien. Yeah, yeah. no, I mean, like, all the races are very recognizable. Yeah. It's elves, orcs, so on and so forth. Beast right, people. yeah, but I mean, like, you know, w- yeah. the first time you go to, you know, like a Telvanni mm-hmm. uh, settlement. Yeah, mushrooms. You know, <laughs> it's like, what the fuck is this? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that's, and that's another thing about the, the setting that's so great is that that's how fully realized it is, that within one country there's, you know, four different very clear kinds of cultures and architectures to, to see. Yeah. You know, and so there's always kind of new stuff to experience. It's not just, like, all at once. Yeah. You know, you're constantly finding new stuff. We yeah. have some bullshit going on in the chat. Oh, do we? <laughs> uh, when is when is Metal Gear Solid coming? Wasn't that your um, first one? Episode, episode one, <laughs> if you can go back in time, or, like, the rest of us, check our YouTube. And Guido, our manager, wants to know who is Kevin and why is he guest starring? All right, so make, make your... Well, I'll, do, do you do, I'll do it Kevin? quick, yes. Yeah. So, uh, I'm a YouTuber. I've been doing it for a few years. Uh, I was part of a larger channel for a while that was a tech one. Thank you for the... Yes. Jesus. You're obsessed. <laughs> That's your favorite I thing like to do on Slasher. I can't wait till you start playing as you just stop doing it. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah. YouTuber. Uh... Just mostly do game reviews. I was part of a larger channel called TLD Today that's all tech stuff, and now I'm doing my own channel. Still linked with those guys, but uh, I just have my own channel for uploaded content, which is just mm-hmm. youtube.com slash Kevin Kenson. So I've known both of you guys in real life for a while, and yeah. you told me you're starting this up. I kind of, you know, helped you hash out some of the ideas, and yeah. holiday rush is over, so I have more free time, so I came by to talk video games. Yeah, one of my favorites. Uh, yeah. As I said, Morrowind, one of my top three. So actually, yeah, one of our head consultants on the show first getting started up. <laughs> yeah. Forgot about that. Uh, and we, I can see we, you just neglected all of my advice. Yeah. Well, <laughs> actually, actually, it was it was your idea to go live and conversational because before this was going to be an edited YouTube kind of deal. Yeah, but you wanted it to still be like an hour long, which yeah, y- you can do, but it's so much better when it's live for that kind of thing for something of that length. So I feel at least. Yep. Yeah. Hey, thanks. Guido. Thank you. Hey, Guido. that's why that's we me. keep Guido. Guido around that's why he's our manager. Our manager. Yeah. yeah, stays on top of it. Yes, beautiful. Your story. Uh, yeah, your first experience. I'm, with I'm it. gonna keep it brief. Uh, yeah. I, Wait, was so what, when were, I, were you scared of her? Did you have a hard no, time? Not at all. Up? So okay, so when when I uh, when I was a kid, I used to hang out with uh, these three brothers, and uh, th- their neighbor from across the street, um, he had an Xbox. He's the mm-hmm. only person I knew who had an Xbox. Mm-hmm. He'd always bring it over. Like he just left it there, and he would play more when. And I would seriously sit and fucking watch. Mm-hmm. I would just watch. Mm-hmm. For like hours at a time, and then finally, ser- maybe after like a couple months of me just watching him play, I was like, I gotta get in here. Yeah. And so I could play like every, you know, like once every Saturday or something. And so I, I got up enough money to actually buy an Xbox, and I just bought the Xbox for uh, Morrowind. And actually, I coerced my sister into buying the Xbox with me, so she put in fifty percent of it. Like fifty percent of the money, mm-hmm. and then I just kept it. <laughs> she, she played it like twice, and then and then I just played Morrowind, mm-hmm. and I, I and that was back in like two thousand three or four. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's been a little while. And I played it until probably two thousand ten or eleven, fairly regularly. Yeah. So when you when when you were first, because you said you were watching someone else play it for a while before you mm-hmm. got it, what what were the things that jumped out at you that made you like what, what so, was selling so, okay, you? Okay, so so basically, like in two thousand three. When I when I saw it, I was like, "Wow, the graphics are fucking incredible!" Like, <laughs> For the amazing. time, oh god. I, I actually still really like the graphics. You know, the I graphics, the well, the aesthetic. Now, the, 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 aesthetic. the graphics as a whole, I do think age very gracefully. Yeah, I do too. They made it their own. They really embraced the it, you know? the facial designs, which has nothing to do with graphical horsepower, did not age. They look <laughs> See, silly. Even, they even look I silly. think it's okay. Yeah. Uh, I mean, well, it's, it's mostly just it's the animation itself. It's not how the faces look, yeah. but when they talk, there's that awkward split at the mouth. No, it, it is the faces themselves. Oh, really? Yeah, I Either mean, I, I remember you were looking through like Bretons, and the, this is how you choose a face. Nope, nope, <laughs> nope. <laughs> nope. They, they nope, look funny. Nope, yeah, no, fun. They, they look, look funny. They look, they look, they look they do. They do. But here's the, okay, so here's, the, here's the dark elves look pretty yeah. good. Yes, yeah, the yeah, I, I, I always played a Dunmer. Exactly. Yeah, for that one. 
Or no, and a Khajiit too. I was mm. always a Khajiit. A cat people. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Who were also now, like drug addicts and all thieves and yeah. Now, slightly like, Russian? I don't know. Right, yes. <laughs> Now the, the but the the main yeah. thing though, hate it when they won't sell me stuff be, or let me buy stuff because I have skooma on me. I'm like, yeah. when, did, when did I pick that up? Yeah. Did somebody plant that on me? I, I don't know who that is. Yeah. Yeah. Now, now that I'm actually thinking about it, it was, it was a twofold thing. I saw I saw the reviews on Toonami while yeah. I was watching. Dragon I was Ball actually going to bring that up. I, I saw, saw that too. Yeah. Yeah. And so, so I was so like, weird. oh my god, I can't wait yeah. to play this game. Yeah. And you know, I I just thought that it was going to be like, oh, you know, you go around, you do this, and it's just going to be like Final Fantasy or something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it was just so much more. Yeah. Well, and, was, and, the, and I was just so attracted to the world, the aesthetic, the architecture, the people. Yeah, like everything well, is just so complex and it draws you yeah. in all at every corner. Yeah, and it's funny that you say that because you were saying like you know you thought it was going to be like uh, you know Final Fantasy going in or just you know JRPGs that you're used to. I had the opposite reaction when seeing because um, I remember before I played it, I saw those those cartoon uh, the, the commercials on Toonami where they were kind of doing the little mini review of it. Yeah, and, and they do what's his name Tom. Tom. Yeah, he's like it well, takes three hours to get across this whole map running. Yeah, and I was like. And and but, I know. but the main thing that sticks in my memory yeah. still from it, and this is one of the things that appealed to me, was uh, I don't remember the name of the character, but the robot like ship AI or whatever that was yeah. talking to Tom. It's talking about the fact that you know you could literally make yeah. anyone or anything and you know explore yeah. the world, you know, make what you want. Yeah. And so that really stuck with me because I was so used to how linear most yeah. RPGs were at the time. So it's like, wait, I can just make mm-hmm. a character that to, like in my mind and just go with it. Yeah. And it it's RP. Yeah, exactly. It was much more straight up RP, and that that's puts the RP in the G. <laughs> ah. All right. So, no, yeah. uh, so we've been doing this for about thirty minutes now. We need to okay. get into so, like, actual gameplay. Yeah, well, or thematics. First. Oh, thematics. I, I don't get to talk about libraries experience. Well, it's very talk different. It's very talk different. About it. I, I feel like it's very interesting. <laughs> right, I have so, very interesting more recent. points. So, okay. so and what we'll have to do to conserve time then is we'll start talking about the thematics as you play. Okay, we'll All right. do that. We'll do that. Yeah. So let, let's hear your let's hear your story. So so playing proper didn't actually start till last week, but I just remember it because Guido just said. Uh, he couldn't get in the Morrowind on the Xbox. Mm-hmm. And um, at the time when it first came out, I saw the review on Toonami. I thought it looked awesome. And again, just uh, like I was talking about, uh, Steven had it on Xbox. And he brought it over one time and, you know, wanted to play it. And we went through the character creation, which, like, you know, it takes a fucking hour. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, I'm like... Especially oh, we don't know what any of it, it does. Ex- I, don't, I didn't know what anything yeah. did, and... And I was like, I think I played as Dark Elf. I was like, he looks cool. And he's like, when was I born? It, I, I don't know. Like, um, and then, you know, what? you pick your constellation and you pick your, you know, you know, your class. You go in and you start doing paperwork. You're doing bureaucracy, right? <laughs> and I'm like, the fuck is this game? Like, I just want to kill some shit. Yeah. And I seriously don't even think I got out of the office the office right when you walk off mm-hmm. the boat into it i'm like god this game is horrible <laughs> and uh you know i i didn't have a chance to engage with it he took it back home he never played it again i don't think mm-hmm. um and so i i sat on that and morrowind was the game that seriously from looking at the combat in it is what made me never want to ever play uh, Elder, Elder Scrolls. Scrolls. When Oblivion came out, I was like, fuck that shit. First person slasher, I don't want to deal mm-hmm. with it. Until like three years after Skyrim was out, I'm like, yeah, I'll try it. You know? Mm-hmm. And, it, and it was fun. But um, now going back, I started playing it last week. And as I said uh, to you, I think, I was like, this game is like the, the Godfather to me, like the movie. The Godfather 2. Oh, yeah, that's right. I'm now, this. I have never seen any of the Godfathers, and that is because I am horrified that I will hate them. <laughs> like, and I, I can't carry that. I don't want to oh. be that guy in life. And that's what Morrowind was like for me. I was like, I want to play this game, but I don't want to... building it up. Yeah, but I don't want to freaking yeah. hate it. And after flipping it on a week ago, putting in 40 hours in it, I can honestly say I, I do like it. I like it a lot. Yeah. And I think it's held up really well, and I think there are a lot of great things. Something that um, wasn't talked about was, like, the world building. It's alien, mm-hmm. but it's so goddamn vast, and they hit you in the freaking face with it. Because mm-hmm. right when you walk out of that first uh, Satan name, you go to the signpost, mm-hmm. and there's, like, seven different towns. Yeah, and all the like, towns you can walk to. And you're like, oh, shit, okay, well, I'm going to Balmora, so I go this way. And then yeah. you get to a new signpost, and there's three more goddamn cities yeah. in that direction. <laughs> and you're yep. like, 
Holy goddamn shit. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's a little overwhelming times. Actually, yeah. I remember talking to a friend um, back in college. Because uh, it, we were talking friend. about Oblivion. Yeah. And we were going over the facts, like, why we still kind of liked Morrowind a little better. Mm-hmm. And one point I made is that, like, you know, with Oblivion, you always know exactly where you are and where to get to where. And with Morrowind, even when you've played it so much, you still occasionally feel kind of lost. Yeah. Like, you don't... It's, it just feels so much larger the way it was designed. Yeah. Um, oh, also, it's just, just funny because I always felt like I knew it that world so well because mm-hmm. I, yeah. I put so much time and yeah. explored everything and it wasn't fast travel so you had to know the land. oh the, you had to yeah. the way <laughs> these cities are structured is that you start in say podunk mm-hmm. town okay yeah. fine you know you just arrived and you're like okay this is what towns look like then you head over to Pelagiad. that's the <laughs> next town over yeah. and that's an imperial town it's an imperial base so it looks like medieval castle right era. yeah more traditional and it's like okay like this is different but it's still podunk like okay this is what cities yeah. look like in the game yeah. <laughs> and then you go to Balmora and you're like oh shit this is huge yeah, yeah. like Halalu and, architecture and you yeah, haven't Halalu. been to yet <laughs> and then you, you go to the Halalu Halalu architecture Halalu. awesome and you're like oh this is what this is the hub this yeah. is and, the game's hub and then you go to Vivek. Well, and, and you're I like, gonna, I was gonna say the thing is, is like, if you take, <laughs> if you go all the way up the coast, so like, let's say that you don't go to Vivek after that. Mm-hmm. The next stop up from uh, Belmora is Caldera, mm-hmm. and Caldera looks yeah. similar to. Uh, it's a Pelagiad, bit in between, but, yeah. It's but it's, it's, it's imperial. Yeah. It's imperial. And then you keep on going up, and you see I'll run for the first time. Yeah. Like, now that one's so fuck is wax. That? And nothing yeah. is weirder than Telvanni though. Right. Right. Well, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. the same. So uh, Sadrith Mora. Yeah. Yeah. You go up to Nissus, and then it's like this weird swampy yeah. imperial fish town, kind of rift in. Like, and, yeah. And then you can same go, as like Claw Ode. Yeah. And then you go all the way around in the boat to like Sadrith Mora, yeah. and that's where you get Talvani stuff. And you're like, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Giant and then you go back down Ebonheart, you know, big huge dragon Again, statue yeah. with uh, uh, more imperial, imperial. Yeah. but yeah. variant imperial yeah. right. architecture. Well, it's and more. Then fully, you go down. Yeah. It's the most fully realized imperial. Yeah, yeah. And you, you see Vivek, and you're uh, like, oh fuck. This was the hub. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Uh, just to address something in chat too, I was seeing earlier people were talking about the whole announcement with uh, ESO going free to play. Uh, it is, but it's not fully free to play. You still have to buy the game. It's mm-hmm. just free to play subscription is going to be the change. Basically, they're doing it so that the console launch is coming up, so people are still going to have to pay for that version. Yeah. So you still have to pay sixty bucks, but it's free to play if you yeah. want to. If you want to money. Yeah, play a shitty I, I think game. If I find if it you want to sa- pay sixty bucks for a shitty game, go I, for it. I might do it if I catch it on sale, only because I'm that morbidly curious. And it's like yeah. I I kind of hate like shitting on things that I don't have firsthand <laughs> knowledge of yet. It's like, I know why I should dislike it, and I've heard all the arguments, and I've seen yeah. gameplay, but I need to experience it firsthand, so I really have that rage. Yeah. Well, you, the thing up. is, my heart's been broken by enough MMOs. Oh, yeah. I don't, yeah. Need, to, I don't need to have it broken again. <laughs> yeah. Too many. So yeah, Too many times. Do you want to get into it? Let's get into yeah, it. Yeah, get into the gameplay, and we'll talk themes. People are getting bored, I'm sure. All okay. right, so... What? We're so <laughs> interested. They want to leave you for Clip Penguin. Let's, yeah, let's talk to chat. So what's up, chat? <laughs> tell, tell us about your troubles. Okay. <laughs> Disclaimer... Oh, the yeah. game might crash. The game was built for Windows XP. And you didn't mod it at all. I'm not <laughs> running Windows XP. <laughs> um, if it crashes, we're going to have to start over, but there's nothing we can do about it. Other than maybe mod it, but I don't fucking... Well, we don't too late. For that now. Too, too late. late. A little late now. Yeah. I, I it's too late! I've known that, that you were running it vanilla. Yep, so here we go, guys. Morrowind. Elder Scrolls 3. Here we go. You ready? I hope so. Here we go. Good so far. All right, so <laughs> is... Crash! Is the Dovahkiin doing Dovahkiin things? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> I, I don't know. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get the effects up. Let's get a little rain sound going. Yeah. It's very um, ambient. Very. The, the same wolf howling in the distance yeah. every music. So let, let's see. Do we have any lurkers in here? We do not. Because people hate us. It's me. I'm jinxing everything. Oh yeah. So uh, by the way, guys. So uh, this is more and hold. We we have an Instagram now. Uh, I made it today because I I thought it's about time we had talked about it together, and you guys said it might be a good idea. So uh, if you're on Instagram, uh, uh, follow us at, at Beer Video Games oh, TV. No, okay. Yeah, there's a delay. Yeah. I know oh, there was. It just seemed even yeah. longer that. Anyways. Now look how far I could jump. Is really. That's the best part. Th- that, that's the best acrobatics. The, the acrobatics in this game matter. It's <laughs> yeah, and it's hilariously easy to raise. Look at my my lizard people. Yep. Yeah. Lizard people. 
I love how they walk. That was and that was actually <laughs> one of the things swagger. that and they, they, the cat people too. Yeah. <laughs> and that was actually something that kind of pissed me off when Oblivion came out because they made them much more upright and like regular because everyone had like the same base model. So like going from the, seeing this to the awkward like human morph they did. Yeah. It, it, it and look as I box it. people on the ear. And you're just yep. it looks like you're clapping. <laughs> I like Mornhold. Good city, guys. It, do we see schools out for summer? And, and these are the themes we're discussing, by the way. You know, yeah. Clapping and, uh, yeah. There was much rejoicing. Um, okay, so this is Mornhold. Okay, so 40, 40 hours clocked into this game. Here's, here's what I've seen of the world. Let's see. Now, there's more undiscovered there than discovered. Oh, yeah. I'll, I'll have to see it. I mean, uh, some of it's also just random mountains that you can't really walk over anyways. Yeah. But, yeah. But still, pretty ridiculous. You know, and like I said, a good 30 of my hours are in this circle, right? And you know what? Not even Surin. No, right here. Not even We're not running a rehab, Alex. Right here. <laughs> That's 30 hours of gameplay. Let's see. It'll, it'll pop up. Yeah, you'll eventually. see it on the replay. So right For those of you who can't tell, I can't really see the computer. Let me open my I'm journal. Being ostracized. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Not, no. not a whole lot. No. That's uh, nice. That's mentioned. the best part of, of moral. There are two <laughs> Altmer in charge of training the goblins for Helseth. If I can also get rid of them, the goddess would be pleased. So I need to be asking around town about goblins. I think... So wait, have you attacked any of the main goblin area yet? No. Because I think they're down there with them. So you just have to find out where the goblins are in the first place. Yeah. I find it funny, by the way, that you are doing the DLC main quests without even touching the core game's main quest at all. I'm not a tool of the Imperial Empire. I, no, I... Yeah, that's... More power to you. Hey. I'm not feeling talkative right now. Wow, I remember that. I remember what that Now, uh... You see, I'm RPing. You know, I was a yeah. slave. I was I was released by the Imperial Empire here. I run it on my laptop. And, you uh... You know, I wanted to get strength within House Lalu, Local strength, so I could leverage the Empire to my needs. You understand? I actually have to say I do approve of that fact at least. And then you join a hardcore traditionalist cult for uh, assassination. For Morag. Oh, now interestingly enough, I joined the Morag Tong so they would protect me from the Dark Brotherhood who was trying to kill me. <laughs> that was your exact logic. Does it make sense? <laughs> it does. A little bit. <laughs> and see, now that I am Grand Master see, of the Morag but, Tong, but I am now here killing the Dark but, Brotherhood. But here's They're the dead. thing. I was telling you this earlier. I was replaying and. The first time I got attacked by Dark Brotherhood was right in the Morag Tong base. No one lifted a finger. No one cared. Happened twice. They attacked me in... There are dead bodies all throughout the Morag Tong base for me. They attacked me in Pelagiad. It's just wherever you sleep at, like, level 5. So anyways, themes. Dude, I didn't yeah. even sleep. Just the dude ran in and tried to kill me. Huh. I, I want to bring it back to Sukaba for a little bit. <laughs> no so, time to talk. So there, there was a reason why we... Um, there's a reason why we chose Sukaba, and part of the part of that was because Sukaba itself is a blend. Um, Ten percent of Sukaba is like some mystery dark beer that gives mm -hmm. it like the plummy notes and all that stuff, and then ninety percent of it is Sukaba with the barley wine. And this is kind of, like similarly, this is like ninety percent new Elder Scrolls and like what Elder Scrolls would become. Yeah, and it's like ten percent Daggerfall. Yeah. It, it was it was definitely where they made a lot of leaps and changes, but it wasn't getting um, simplified or streamlined yet. Definitely. Well, it was streamlined well, a little bit. It was streamlined yeah, a little well, bit. Yeah, but, it was not adapted to new engine yeah. and all that okay, stuff. So I need to go to the sewers. Oh, also for, I don't, I don't know the person's actual name, but uh, Pulp Matman. Yeah, this yeah. one doesn't have any Dark Brotherhood. It's a different Assassin Guild, which we were talking about earlier. Well, the I Dark Brotherhood's on. here. They're here, but I, you can't join them. I, I tried to kill them. You. Yeah, I Constantly. killed them all. So and that's only in the expansion. They weren't in the game at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was only the other one. In the sewers beneath God's Reach. Do, does anybody know where that is? Uh, you have to look for a sewer. Like, like, it's yeah. like a corner. It's, yeah, but it's in God's Reach. It's a, it's I'm a in a trap great door. bazaar right now. Yeah, it's in like a trap door, like on the outskirts. I need to find yeah. God's Reach. There. And then, um, oh, just on the further thing about Dark Brotherhood. Uh, Waltz Assassins, it's very differently flavored. It's much more yeah. like... It's legal. It's, it's, it's completely legal. legal. Yeah. Like you, you get pulled by guards. And you're like, oh no, I have this note saying I can you do it. Writ. Yeah, a writ. And then, uh, and and the entire thing is based more around like honor killing and like, kind of helping negotiate great house wars because sometimes they avoid regular law. So, it's very different in tone, even though it's also an assassin guild. 
Yeah, good stuff. Yeah. By the way, everybody, uh, go ahead and uh, subscribe to Vexy's channel because she's doing uh, she's doing uh, Skyrim. God's and rich. That should be fun. Yeah. So now the sewer is going to be somewhere around here. Yeah, look at the ground. It's it's yeah. going to be in a trap door. It's going to be like on the on the See, edge, now, not in the middle. I also want to find out about the Altmer. What about Dilborn? My friend Dilborn gone three days now, as Thread said. Oh snap! A big and mighty wizard, Dilborn. <laughs> Red books to thread. <laughs> that's the that's all, the master name of the master. Uh, it's baby cakes. All the woods. <laughs> big woods. <laughs> two, maybe three times. Now three Dilborn, times, maybe even two. Now Dilborn gone. No one read books to thread. Oh boy. Um. So I'm gonna just say I'm gonna help him because even if I say no, it's gonna show up in my journal anyway. Do it and yeah. be like, yeah, you didn't help him. <laughs> <laughs> so and it's it's gonna be there for infinity. But, see, I'm looking for an Altmer, and nobody wants to tell me about Altmer. What, they're what about they're, they're going to be where the goblins are. Really? Yeah, yeah, they're dying. training them. Well, maybe they have proxies. <laughs> so let's talk about... Pretty uh, sure they're with them, at least. I don't know. It's been a while. Let's talk about the intersection of determinism, free will, and the perception of, I guess, the Nereva Reign. The Nereva Reign. And in Nereva. this game... The concept of the chosen one... As a political... Which is not at all ubiquitous simple. in RPGs. So. <laughs> not at all. <laughs> not at all. <laughs> that doesn't come up, like, ever, really. I, I think, yeah. Old Mourn Hold. There you go. Residential sewers. That sounds like a sewer to me. There you go. Yep, that's it. So, I guess to talk yeah, about this in a meaningful way, it's actually better to, to back up to Skyrim. To talk about determinism. <laughs> flash forward. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess flash forward. Talk about Skyrim to talk about determinism. <laughs> uh, These gobbies? Well, and Oblivion. Too. God damn it! Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Not I with mean, you, but it's definitely. Well, about actually, it. with you too, because uh, you're the facilitator. You're like yeah. this grand hero that's going right. to help. But but, but you're Martin not do yeah. what he needs to do. Right, but you're not the prophesized like puppet right. that you put up and yeah, exactly. But the first thing that you actually run into in the very beginning of the game is. You know, Patrick Stewart comes into your jail cell and he says, "Oh my God, you're the person that I saw in like my dreams oh, and right. visions. Yeah. The gods have placed you here so that you can help me. Like you're still this Almighty Chosen One. Yeah. And yeah, you you don't be you don't like sacrifice yourself yeah. so that the realm is. is yeah, it's know, it's ultimately but... about uh, see me killing Martin. these gobbies. Yeah. Good, good Are job. you sniping, bro? Yeah, as you should. I'm an American sniper. Oh boy! Oh boy! Don't get Madman started on American Sniper. Does he love or, it? Or get him started? Does he love it? No. He a, he loves movies. He says it's lazy filmmaking. Um. But uh. Any anywho. Uh. The thing that I love so much about Morrowind is that there there actually is a lot of evidence that shows that yeah you. You very well could be mm -hmm. Nerevar's reincarnation. Yeah. There's a lot of evidence to show that it's completely coincidental and circumstantial. Yeah. And there's a lot of evidence that shows that it's circumstantial, but only not really. You're being yeah. pushed to yeah. do all of these things. I don't think it's coincidental at all. I well, think it's completely forced. I think it's forced, but I think that the ways in which you navigate...